They believe that freedom is licensed to do whatever you want. That's why they're, quote, non-judgmental. They made a judgment when they made themselves non-judgmental. They believe in no holds barred. They don't like the three dreaded words in the English language we got from our Jewish friends, thou shalt not. They don't want to be told anything, which is why they die prematurely. They are unhappy. That's why we have a disproportionate number of agnostics and atheists in the asylum. All of this is true. Now, look, they've got some serious problems. I'm talking here about the militants. I'm not talking about your average atheist or agnostic. Right, right. They're not a, more of a threat than, than, than a lame Catholic is. But I am talking about the organized group. It's only a small percentage of them, but every year they have to try and do something to stick it to us. And like American atheists, when do they have their annual convention every year? On Good Friday. And you say, See, it's all directly, in, it, it, it's, it's all the middle finger in the face of Christians. And you say atheists and agnostics die earlier and because they're unhappy, and, and there's more of them in, in mental institutions? Absolutely. I have a book coming out in March, it'll be back to you, which details all of this stuff in great, great detail. You take a look at people who are secularist, and you compare them to people of faith, there's a huge difference when it turns to health and happiness, mental health, physical health, and degree of happiness. Now look, they got to work it out. Fine. You know, I'll help pay for the therapy. Just get, keep, keep your hands, your mitts <laughs> off the Catholics during Christmas. I love this guy. <laughs> I do. Um, and that's been a great Phil Donahue, uh, ladies and gentlemen.